All right, in this video, I want to talk about setting up the good old Edge Router X router. I'm going to take the just the basic steps to be able to set up this router to hand out IP addresses and also what it takes to set it up in a WISP. Basically, it's about the same. All right, the first thing you need to do is go into your network configuration on your laptop, your Chromebook, your computer, whatever it may be that you're actually setting this up on. And to do that, me, let's see, here we go. Get over here in your network. Now this here is set to 192.168.1.1. So your network needs to be set in that same range. So you double click on it, go to IP4, and type in 192.168.1.1. Now, do not put one because you can't be on the same IP as the router. Anything will work. So we're going to use five. Hit the tab button. It automatically fills this in. And that's all you need to get this to work. You don't have to worry about the uh, DNS to get this to work. So we go here. Go here. Get that out of there. Open up a browser. browser here and type in 192.168.1.1 let's see here we should be able to get into now that we have that brought up even though it's not going to get there yet because we haven't plugged it in so we take the router the power supply that comes with it Plug it in, let it boot up, get your Ethernet cord, plug it into the um, port zero. Up, and then we hit the reload we should be able to get into that network the open up another one let's be sure here 192.168.1.1 There we go. All right, now the default is UBNT. Password default is UBNT. And it's gonna come up with this, says router is in default configuration. Do you want to start with the basic setup wizard? If you just wanna set this up as a router and get it to work handing out IPs as in a WISP or your home or business, we just go ahead and say yes. And we get right here and you see the port zero, DHCP, automatically obtain network settings from the uh, internet service provider. That way it automatically detects the internet from your router or from another router depends on how you got it set up it will take that and this will give out DHCP IPs as the devices are plugged in in port 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now you can have two different range of IPs but in this demonstration we're going to show that it's only one range and all 
by all four of them ports will be in the same range. Right here it says only use one LAN. That is just you're going to use all of them the same IP. Configure this section right here, LAN ports, ETH1, ETH2, ETH3, ETH4. You open that up and you type in the IP that you want. We are going to use, for this demonstration, 10.10.10.1 is what we're going to use. Then you come down here, password. You change your password. And say apply, and you see that it says the DHCP is going to change the range of IPs. And it says use browser to go to 10.10.10.1. Apply changes has been applied successfully. Reboot. Are you sure? Yes. Now, Ubiquity equipment, as far as I can see in the past of working with this, it actually will send you to that IP after it reboots. Even though we're on 192.168. 1.1 it will switch it over to the new IP if not you just go type that in it's still waiting for it to reboot and while we wait we just open up another tab and go ahead and put that in and see if this one here will actually take us to the new one or not. If not, we already have a new one open. And now since it's handing out IPs, one thing you need to do is take it out of port zero, put it in point one, port two, three, or four, so it will actually go there. So it will actually give your network, um, your computer, laptop, whichever it may be, an IP. Reload here. Should give out IPs on that range. Should be able to do that. Let's see if it will or not. Let us get into the new IP. Now something else before you get this, you know, before it actually will go there, you need to go back into your network and actually let it receive a IP. So we have to go back to the network. Whoop. Let's get this here. You have to go back into your network, which I forgot. I did. Go to properties and go to IP4 and actually put it on obtain an IP and it will get an IP from the router. As now you see, I got 10.10.10.1 and there we are. Don't matter how long you do this, you're always going to make a mistake somewhere along the line, put the wrong password it's supposed to be a capital letter or lowercase same letter but uppercase lowercase and it just won't communicate but that's what you have to do after you set the IP range in the router then put it back put it into port one two three and four go into your network card uh, in your laptop desktop whatever and tell it to obtain a IP on its own from the router that you plugged into. Now that we are in that router, 
We can log in. With the new password that we made when we set the new IP range. And that's it. That's all it takes if you want the basic setup for this router. And you can set this up in your home, your business, or as a WISP. Set up the AP, plug it in. S be sure you set the AP and all your CPEs on static IPs. So you can set up the AP as 10.10.10.2. And then you can start 10 by 10.10.10.10 uh, 10 .10 .10 .10 .10 as your first CPE, then 10.10.10.11 10 for your next CPE. That way you have from 3 to 9 for any other equipment that you may want in your network there before it the IPs that it hands out on the CPEs. Pretty much you can set up any range for your CPEs. You can start at 50. Let the first one be 50 for the CPEs. That way you have from 2 to 50 or 49 to set up any other routers, servers, whatever you want as static IPs on the lower range of the static IP range that the router actually hands out. That is the easiest setup way you can set this router. <clears throat> and the reason why I use 10.10.10.1 is because it gives me so many different ranges um, to use. I have like 10.10.1.1 on like one tower, then the next one is 10.10.10. 2.1 that way you'll never you know basically you won't run out of IPs that is the easiest way I found to use this router and pretty much in any application you can set up for your house that way that way you just plug in the device and it gets an IP or you can set a static IP on the device that you're plugging in in that range whatever range you want and the reason why I like using 10 point something is because most routers out there is on 192.168 something. So you won't run into a chance of having any conflict in the network. Because if you set this up 192.168.5.1, there's some routers out there that that's their default out of the box. And if the customer plugs that in, sometimes it will conflict and throw up errors on their end and um, cripple their internet access. So use the 10.10 .10 range and pretty much you're going to be staying away from issues that can be caused by that. Now, of course, you'll probably have a customer out there that's got a little geek um, in them and they might set their router as 10.10.10.1 never know but when you do you can work around that but that is the way I set them up out of the box just plain and simple now you can set up um, like 10.10.10.1 and then you can set up uh, another range in there, 10.10.5.1, so you can have two different routing numbers that it's going to hand out. If you run it into a business, you can have it come into a building and have one business on you know, one set and have the other business on the other. It really don't matter. I mean, or if you want to set it up that you can have one range for the business and one range you put in a hot spot for the business and the free Wi-Fi in there will be on certain range and it won't be seeing the other 
So, I mean, it's different ways you can set it up, but that's the way I set it up as a WISP and set the AP as a uh, static IP and set the CPEs as a static IPs. It just works better that way. I used to put the 192.168 in here and everything, and I have, I have run in problems, so I switched over to the other IP range. Have no issues since then of conflicts of the IPs. But hopefully this helps some way. And if you got any questions, like always, leave it in the comments below this video and we'll do our best to help you. See you in the next video.